for acquisition, advisor acquisition, board of directors, anything, anytime, anywhere. I'm going to go through 10 steps, the meat and potatoes of which is in the middle of why isolation is a good thing. We're going to talk about how to increase your value and net worth. We're going to go through, begin with the end in mind, whip boo whip them. Some cool things like tornado technique. I think I did that early on. Hopefully you guys were practicing it. Learn how to make introductions. Learn how to get referrals. This is going to be word for word, tactical, psychological warfare. And you'll see why. Step eight and nine is really about the psychology. All right? But this is what we do. As an entrepreneur, when you start out, it's not mission impossible. It's mission I am possible. <laughs> This is about figuring out what I need to do to be successful. Doesn't matter how many resources you have if you don't know how to use them. Right? Sales, marketing, tools, analytics, all this stuff is great. If you don't know how to use it, it doesn't matter. So get really good at using the tools. And tools could be analytics, they could be spreadsheets, they could be people. But figure out how to use your tools because you want this. You want success to be why not me. All right, so I normally do a couple fun graphics things. There aren't that many other than this one. This is what, one of my favorite, because yeah. if you've seen it, right, everything's spinning, and when you pick a dot, it stops. Being an entrepreneur is still about learning how to be focused on exactly what you're good at or what you need to accomplish. All right, because the world's going to be spinning around you constantly. You have to learn how to focus. Very important. All right, step one, isolation is a good thing. Again, begin with the end in mind. As you're going through figuring out from a company, it's really important to figure out and think about what kind of company you want to be. When you're doing sales, marketing, recruiting, even as you're building, there's a difference between a business and a company. You guys, to your credit, have some things that are real businesses. I sat through and did San Francisco, and time after time I went you know, and said, well, let me rephrase that. You guys have things that are companies. <laughs> San Francisco had a bunch of businesses. Little lifestyle mobile apps that, you know, you sit there and you're like, this isn't a company. It's a business, which is fine if you want a lifestyle business or a company. You want to be public or private. There's a huge difference. You want a lot of employees or few. You know, my new saying that I'm coined, you guys have heard MVP. Has everybody talked about Minimum viable product, mm -hmm. well figure out your MVT, <laughs> which is your minimum viable team. Mm -hmm. You can do so much more now with so few people, so much less, that you really gotta find the right people on your team. Do you wanna have a product or service, company, business, you wanna travel or not? These things are really important to think about because when you set the direction of your company, that's what people are gonna follow. What kind of sales guys you have, what kind of team you build, your management is all set up of your vision. <coughs> so learn how to set a goal. 10-year goal, what amount of money do I want to make? What do I want to be worth? Do I want to travel, not, to have a family? Do yourself a favor and really think about what kind of company you want and what kind of lifestyle. Number two, this is where we start getting into the warfare. Anybody heard of with them? What's in it for me, right? Everybody's got one. Think with who, with them. From a marketing standpoint, from a networking, from a referral standpoint, how can I figure out what's in it for you? If I can meet with you and figure out how do I add value to you? How do I create value for the other party? What does that person need? What do they like or dislike in their situation? You know, again, this, I want you guys to realize, what I'm gonna go through, the reason I specifically want to do this one for you is, this is sales and marketing, but you're gonna use these techniques whether you're recruiting somebody for your company, whether you're getting somebody from a business, whether you're looking for customers, this is a universal technique system. What do they like or dislike? What would they change or do differently? You know, you've got customers. What would they change? What do they like? What is your competition doing? What's important to you? How do you focus on a win for both parties? What's in it for you? What's in it for me? When you think about adding value to the other party, it completely changes the dynamics of not only your conversation, but your emails, your letters, your correspondence. You know, it took me a long time. I've got a guy who's a director in, in entertainment, and all of his emails were all about how great he was and all the stuff he could do. 
And I would take his emails and I'd write, rewrite them with like three sentences. You know, Steve McPherson, president of ABC. Steve, read about you at ABC, heard you're working on this project, I think we have something that can help you get your goal, love to talk. Now, we wanted his goal to be using our technology, had nothing to do with our technology in the email. It was, your goal is here, we think we can help you get your, this is what's in it for you. You know, you completely redo your email correspondence when you think this way. And it's about adding value to that other person. Now, we want them to use our business, but it's all about that person having value. This is a big challenge. This is somebody's business. Who hasn't been up here? You really wanted to come up here, but you're not gonna get to, so come up here real quick. This is just, this is just a fun little technique, all right? I'm gonna do this, and I do this sometimes. Stand next to me. You guys have ever seen me do this before? Don't laugh. All right. <laughs> Could you guys hear me? No. Okay. It's just All right. You don't know it or you do? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that, that's a, she's going to tap a song. I want you guys to listen and tell me what song she's tapping. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Go ahead. Happy Thank birthday. you. Good job. Happy birthday. Anybody else? Anybody else? Free bird. Free bird. <laughs> yes! Star Spangled Banner. Yeah. Here's the deal. When you guys are des describing your company, we're going to talk about the tornado technique. Realize most people don't understand what you do, don't care what you do, and can't figure out what you do. <laughs> and the majority of that is based on the way you explain it, because in your head, you understand it and all they hear is you knocking on the table. All right, we're gonna do tornado technique and really work on this, but I've done this before. I, I always use our company in Chicago, Rona Star. All right, so I'm gonna stand over here. I'm gonna knock on the table, Rona Star. Rona Star, you guys ready? Mm -hmm. Enterprise software application company. We're an SAS or an SAP. We're a cloud-based system. Sits over an Oracle or an SAP FA module. We help companies redeploy idle assets using a proprietary electronic currency without an API into their FA module. We're a cost avoidance, procurement reduction, or an EPS initiative because we can target the procurement and reduce the spend on the front as opposed to on the back without a disposition program, so we're a direct to the bottom line initiative. Don't you guys love what I do? <laughs> when you stand up and talk about your company, in our head, we know what we're doing. And if you find somebody, like, like Jimmy's great, I'm sitting there just taking notes going, what is he talking about? <laughs> but I know it's so important, I want to learn. Somebody else that knows him is going to go, man, that's freaking brilliant. Majority of people aren't going to get it. It's important, but they're not going to get it. Tornado technique works like this. There is an emotional value of what you do. <coughs> people make decisions emotionally and defend them logically. There's an emotional value of your business. We help people make their trips better. You know, we help people find new friends. There's something real visceral and emotional that you can figure out in your company. Then within there, there's an industry that you're really good in. Then there's probably specific companies that you either do business with or want to do business with. Then within those companies, there's a specific person that you need to or want to do business with. And if you know the name of the person, it's even better. So tornado technique is not all the crap flying around at the top of the tornado, right? The cow, the refrigerator, the car, all the stuff at the top of the tornado is not relevant. The relevance is that little tiny tip that touches the ground. So when you figure out what you're doing in your business, you can use tornado technique for anything. All right, so here's Rona Star. What does Ronastar do? Watch how simple this is, guys. We help really large companies save a lot of money. Companies are trying to save money. We're really good in industries like automotive, manufacturing, public school, government, really big industries with lots of stuff. Some of our clients are United Airlines, Chicago Public Schools, and NASA. Within those really big companies, we sell primarily to the CFO, and we're trying to meet the CFO for the state of California, Los Angeles Public Schools, and Disney. If you happen to know any CFOs, I'd love to talk to them. That's what I do. Want to try another one? Wet rock. I mean, I have 
We have it for all of our companies. What's relevant, Wet Rock, environmental company helps consumers save money. We target social, social responsibility. Our target customers, the industries, are automotive retail. The companies we're going after, Starbucks, McDonald's, Wells Fargo, UPS. We're trying to meet Mike Duke, chairman of Walmart, <laughs> Benoit Kosla, Jeff Skull, Michael Eisner. Guys, when you talk about your business, the majority of people don't do this. This psychology is called isolation of faces. All right? If I were to, to, to ask any one of you right now who are the top three to five people by name you want to meet to help your business, how many of you would know those three people? Two. A couple. Exactly. The top three companies you want to partner with, how many would know? Within that company, who's the person you want to talk to? By title or name, how many of you would know? See, you want people to help you in your business? They can't help you if you can't help yourself. If you don't isolate exactly who you want to meet, people can't help you. You know, Orion Nation, excuse me, Orion Nation, anti-Facebook, anti-TMZ, our industries are um, agencies, publicity firms, management firms, we're working with CAA, Rogers and Callan. We want to meet Jeff Skull, Ryan Seacrest, Scooter Braun, Ashton Kutcher, Jeff Zucker, Ron Burkle. This is what happens. I, I didn't go through all this. You guys can go back and read it. How many people know Jeff Skull? It's okay. How many people know Ryan? How many people know who Scooter Braun is? Ron Burkle? Here's what's Ron, okay. Here's what's important, guys. If you don't know these people, it's okay. Because if I have a business, and I'm out marketing my business, and I say, oh, we have a platform for entertainment, and we need entertainment people. <laughs> How many people know somebody in entertainment? <laughs> yeah, I don't, want your, I don't want to talk to everybody you know. I want to be very specific. If you don't know Jeff Skull, who started Participant Productions, was one of the top guys at eBay, has done movies like Syriana, Kite Runner, Charlie Wilson's War, I, it doesn't matter. This is who I want to do business with. What you want to do is figure out how to isolate down and you want to create names based on companies, titles, and individuals. Because what you want somebody to do when they're learning to help you is you want them to make a lateral move, not a vertical. By lateral, this is what I mean. You may not know Jeff Skull, but you may know George Lucas. You may not know Ryan Seacrest, but you may know Simon Fuller. You may not know Scooter Braun. Anybody know Scooter Braun? Okay. Has anybody heard of Backplane? Backplane's right here in San Diego. Lady Gaga's manager got a million dollars from Tomorrow VCs. They're creating a Lady Gaga. Scooter is Justin's manager. We have a meeting with Scooter because we're saying to Scooter, hey, you're missing the boat. But we got a meeting because we wanted a meeting with Scooter. Jeff Zucker, NBC. I mean, the point is, you need to target exactly who you want to do business with by company, title, and name, and learn how to create something that's a tornado technique in your head. Does that make some sense? If we have time, we'll do role play, because almost nobody gets it right. 3A, tornado technique for use on others. When I'm having conversations with people, I do not try and figure their business out. I can't. Here's what I do. If, if What was Gary, right? Greg. Greg. If Greg and I were talking, he's telling me about his app, he's doing it, I'd say, Greg, all right, I kind of get it. Like, what's the biggest value you do for your consumer? What do you think somebody uses your app? What's the biggest value? Oh, they're going to do this and this. All right. Who are you going after? Are you going after consumers or business? <coughs> Who's your targeted partners? What's your industry? Who are you trying to meet? Right now, who are the top three or four people you want to meet? I ask them the specific questions in a sequence. It's very tactical. I can walk them through to explain their business to me in a way they don't know how to explain it. And by the time I'm done, I know their value, I know what they're trying to do, and I know who they're trying to meet. This is real simple, especially if you're doing a lot of networking events and things like that. You can waste so much time talking to people, and at the end you're like, I don't know what you do, and I certainly don't know how to help you. <laughs> and people leave you the same way. They're like, oh, well, I, it's some travel thing. <coughs> if you don't have an ask, of what you're trying to do or who you're trying to meet, people can't help you. What can I do to help? Who are the two or three companies on your wish list? 
Who are the two or three people you're trying to meet right now? I isolate down an asset to people all the time. And I try and make a lateral move. This helps me figure out their business in a way they can't usually figure it out themselves. Then, number four, deflect, defer, and disclose, DQ'd. Right, what's, what's her name? Rana. Rana. If Rana and I were at a networking event, right? Are you guys doing some networking events, little name tags? <laughs> Rana and I met, if, if I saw Rana and I'm like, oh, Rana, you know, hey, tell me what you do. <clears throat> what would you tell me? Just real quick, 10 seconds, what would you tell me? My company helps breast cancer survivors restore their self-image and improve their vitality. Okay. Somebody asked me what I did. What do you do? What do you do? Uh, we've got an incubator company. We create companies. But anyway, Rana, breast cancer, tell me more about that. <laughs> I deflect, right? If, if Ron asks me what I do, I can't go, well, what do you do? <laughs> That's combat. Your mind flares up and goes, what an asshole. What do you, I just asked you a question. Answer. You, you can't have that psychology. Deflect, defer, and disclose says somebody asks you a question. You listen, respond, answer, and feed a question back to them. But that response doesn't have to be an exact response. The mind just registers that you answer. So I don't ever answer. I'm like, oh, you know, we build companies, we're all over. But anyway, tell me more about you. Oh, well, and people love to talk. Deflect, defer, and disclose says don't answer. Find a generic response, redirect it back, be genuinely interested, lead the conversation by asking good questions. Like, wow, Ron, wow, that's great. So what's the value that you do? I mean, how do you really help the survivors? Who are you trying to get to? What I could ask her four, five, six questions and find out. Does she want Susie B. Coleman, or does she want something else, and who's she trying to meet? I'm tactically going through. So by the time I talk to, to Rona, 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 Rona and I may talk about Wet Rock because that's our environmental products company and it's all charitable and consumer driven. Greg and I may talk about something completely different. Jimmy and I are going to have a great conversation about CPC to consumer acquisitions <laughs> on something else we're launching that I know nothing about. But by the time I tell somebody and disclose what I do, I get to pick my response. If you're talking to an investor, your response to that investor of what you do should and better be drastically different than somebody else that owns a hotel or somebody else that owns a travel site or somebody that can help you drive CPC traffic. By throwing your cards on the table first, you are at a disadvantage in that conversation. You have no idea who that person is, what they do, or who they know. Never do it. Deflect, defer, disclose. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Psychological warfare. This is my favorite one out of all of them. I, I like them all. If you guys don't, I like them all. <laughs> this one's really fun. Use a reverse tornado technique when you meet somebody. Deflect, defer, and disclose the questions back. Again, coffee meetings, interviews, sales channel, all of this stuff is the same. What you're doing is you're making mental notes of the people you're going to do introductions to. Like if Greg and I were talking, he's, I went in the middle go, oh my God, Richard Banks. Do you know Richard? Gosh, you should know Richard. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make a mental note, Richard Banks. Oh, I'm going to make another mental note. Oh, Tom Beers. I'm going to make another. I'll make a mental note, and mentally on my mental tree, I can hang about five names before I go, oh, crap, I better write it down. <laughs> but I, two, three, four, I can remember through the course of the conversation. So I'm isolating the names. So when I find the time is done in our conversation, I'll say, okay, let, remind me to introduce you to. Richard Banks. Here's what Richard did. Richard did this at, at Travelocity. He did this. Remind me to introduce you to this person from this company. Here's what he does in this person. I would set the stage and I would give Greg, right? I keep going to Gary, Greg. I'd keep going to Greg. Hey, Greg, here's two or three names of companies of people. Does it sound like those are the kinds of people you want to meet based on our conversation? Okay, great. Now let me tell you what I do. I have just hung a psychological burden on him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of an implied referral where he's got to go, oh crap, I better pay attention and give him my best guy. Every one of you has your two or three best people that you're afraid to give to somebody else. I get your best people every time. Because I psychologically do this 
and I've got two or three names. I don't do it in the middle of the conversation. I don't interrupt your logic flow. I don't do it. I'll take notes, write it down, and I'll say, remind me to introduce you to these people when we're done. Now let me tell you what I do. And when I tell you what I do, it can be focused, it can be direct, and it can be relevant to you and your background and your company and who I think you know and what I think you can do. But I've set it up where it's about helping you be successful. And then I should have it on here. Do I have the, the R thing on here? No, is it on the next one? No, okay. Somewhere in here I might have taken it off. I, I'm a big proponent of, I have a, a, a feeling there's a difference between a referral and a recommendation. All right, and, and I wanna put this out there. A referral to me is, I just met Chris. Mm -hmm. Chris and I just met at an event. I don't know what he does. By the time the night's over, I will. But if I just met Chris, I don't know him well enough to recommend him. But if I talk to him, find out what his business is, what he's doing, because I've done this to other people, I know what another party is looking for. You know, like Jimmy's an easier one. When I run across people who don't want SEO or anything, you know, I'm going to ask Jimmy, hey, if you want additional consulting or business, can I send you somebody? If he says yes, I can make a referral all day long. I just met this guy. Jimmy's a great guy. You guys should meet. Give me my agency because I don't do it. But, but that's, <laughs> that's my point is I would ask that question, and I'll show you a little technique later on of how to do that. But the point is referring two people together when you set the stage, I'll do it all day long without malice or concern on my reputation because I set it up. I just met this person. They seem like they have something you want. You might Here's your introduction. You guys are on your own. Recommendation and referrals are different, so I, I don't ever feel bad about making introductions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Use referral currency. Build it up. Imply psychological burden. Learn how to call a referral. This one, again, this is from my six years of sales training, which, by the way, if you guys don't remember what I did for six years, I convinced people, every one of you, if you give me 10 <coughs> minutes with you, I could convince you to come work for me to go out and sell life insurance at night on full commission to your friends. And you guys are laughing, you haven't sat down with me. <laughs> Trust me, I could do it. Because I would figure out what you like and dislike about your job, your position, where you are emotionally, and I would build a story to get you all of your hopes and dreams and goals by working for me. When you're doing sales and marketing, it's psychological about helping somebody else achieve what they want has nothing to do with them buying your product. It has something to do with you helping somebody else be successful. When you spin your mind that way, it's a completely different approach of what you're doing. Right, I mean, Jimmy wants, I, I keep using her, I'm sorry. He wants everybody to use his company, but at the end of the day, his, his success is the success of the ad for his customer. It's really about doing a good job for that person, because the more people you do a good job for, the more we're gonna come back to you. So learning how to call a referral is really important. You'll leave, I mean, I've got pages and pages of referrals of people. I, I never have time to call everybody, and the referrals I get are amazing. Here's how you call a referral. What you don't do, don't read this here. How many of you have ever got a phone call? All right, I'm gonna pick somebody else. What's your name again? Tracy. Tracy. Oh, my name's, I was gonna say Tammy. If I called <laughs> Tracy and said, hey Tracy, my name's Stephen Mead, how are you doing? What goes through somebody's mind, number one, they look at the caller ID, because caller ID gives you away now. They're like, do I know this person? I don't have this number. Okay, do I answer or not? Let me answer. This is Steven. Tracy's going, who are you? Why are you calling? What are you selling? I don't know you. Why did I pick up the phone? I never pick up the phone on a caller ID. My kids are calling. All of this goes through their mind instantly. If I said, hey, Tracy, my name's Steven Mead. I got your name and number from Janine. Still, okay, Janine, well, I know her from Founders, but still, why are you? This is a sequence. It's eight seconds, <coughs> sometimes six if you do it right. Hey, Tracy, my name's Steven Mead. I got your name and number from Janine at the Founders Institute. Did I catch you at a good time? Name, introduction, question, pause. If you pause anywhere in here, you're dead. <laughs> People are wondering who you are, why you're calling, and what you want. Don't give them that chance. Did I catch you at a good time? Now what happens is, psychologically, Tracy starts going, well, I know Janine. Janine's not gonna send me somebody unless it's important. Now I can make a decision based on how busy I really am. Do I have a few minutes? 
Yes, actually I do. Great, here's specifically why I'm calling. If you guys have done the tornado, if you know what you're doing, if you know why Janine introduced you to Tracy or why Janine introduced me, I know specifically what our point of reference is. No. Great. Is there a better time I can follow up with you? This is so simple. Name, introduction, catch you at a good time. This will give the person an opportunity to respond in a much better way. Because when you start getting referrals to the level of people you want, if you want a Jeff Zucker, if you want a President Clinton, if you want, you know, it doesn't matter who you want. You can get to those people. And when you call them, you have to do it the right way. Learn how to make an introduction. Pretty simple. I do this in networking events all the time. It's, it's a way to get the crowd working for you. If you guys ever go to events, what happens is we bounce around, we read name tags, we hope. I can tornado technique somebody in 30, 45, 60 seconds, two minutes. I know who they are, what they want, who they need to meet. So I just remember that. As I'm going through, I can find two people at an event, and I'll grab them and bring them over. I'll grab somebody I know and introduce them to somebody else. But I set the stage. What's the value? Here's so-and-so. Here's what he does. Here's what he's looking for. Here's the other person. Here's what they do. Here's why I think you two should talk. It's not, hey, Tracy, here's Chris. You guys should meet each other. <laughs> Got a million things to talk about. Don't. You, you put yourself in such a poor position because then both people are like, okay, well, hi, and uh, you, you waste do? everybody's time. Okay, oh, Chris, so what do you do? Tell me about you. No, don't do it. <laughs> Set a credible introduction for both parties to establish a mutual point of interest. And you can easily do that. No credibility. It's two minutes. Grab somebody, walk them over. But what it also does is it, again, builds that referral currency. Because then that person's going, oh, well, gosh, I, let me think about what Tracy did. Oh, yeah, Tracy needs these four people. Who do I know as I'm in the event? And you get people at an event working for you. You get people in other companies working for you. You get people doing things for you when you specifically isolate down and they know exactly what you want and need. These are simple things to do. Establish mutual point. Oh, there's my refer versus recommend. I knew it was on there somewhere. Okay? Take meetings early and often. I've talked about this one before. If you get introduced, right, if you guys are building your company, develop a wish list. Who do you want as advisors? Who do you want as board members? Who do you want as investors? And learn how to get introduced directly to them. Take meetings early and often, right? We did this with Cineplex, our mobile company. We've closed four rounds of funding. We've gone live. CEO of Verizon's on the board, Bill Clinton. It's, it's crazy. We took meetings, though, in, in San Francisco with four targeted VCs who directly and specifically invested in telecom. We did the research. We knew who they are. We knew they would like the product. They would like the service. We got credibly referred into them. And we took the meeting early, not asking for money. Took the meeting, didn't waste our time. We said, we need 30 to 45 minutes. We'd love to show you what you're doing, what we're doing. Get your feedback to figure out what things we need to do to maybe one day be funded by you. If we share with you what we're doing now, we'd love your honest feedback on what we need to work on to get ready. We didn't wait until we were ready. We don't know, you don't know what wait is. But we didn't go in going, we're going to conquer the world and we're amazing and we're going to do what nobody in the world's ever done, which we've actually did, but at that time, you, you can't go, be humble. Ask why things won't work. If you take meetings early and often under the premise of learning, here's what we're doing. Why won't this work? What am I missing? Who's my competition? You know, what have you seen? I mean, Jim, Jimmy, was, have you guys raised money? Because you, no? I have, some, a, I have a million dollars. Okay. But some of the stuff he was talking about, when what the venture guys are thinking. The night for you. Oh, okay. So I think you're good at that, yeah. Yeah, but, but when you go in, venture guys have a completely different mentality. If you get credibly introduced, though, you can go in early and find out what that mentality is. Develop a relationship under the premise of, I know we're not ready, but I'd love to share with you what we're doing. Get your feedback of what we can do better. This will get you so far ahead.
When you do that, though, what question is almost never asked of someone in a position of power? Right? Uh, somebody give me a wish list. Like, who's on your? Who's like the number one person you love to meet in your business or industry? Pick somebody. Nobody has anybody. Oh yeah, I'd like to meet Marty Seligman. Who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I don't. Like he's him. a very famous. He's a very famous author. He's the fa father of positive psychology, and I refer to his work in my application. Okay, perfect. If you met him, let's not say if when. We'll do the whole positive when. Okay. When you meet him. The question that's almost never asked of somebody in power. Anybody want to guess what it is? What can I do to help you? <laughs> Problem with that is it's the wrong way to ask. What you have to do is learn how to ask great questions. Not only of somebody in power, but it, it's what can I do to make this happen? Let's 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 skip gears. This was a little out of order, but we'll pull it together real quick and then I'm done. It's only ten steps. Asking good questions is important. Why won't this idea work? What can I do to get better? What am I missing? Who's my competition? Who else is doing this? Who do you think would like this? How could this help you get your goals? What can it do to help you? There's so many things you can do from a question standpoint. But the question that's almost never asked of the person in power is how can I help you? Because everybody's going to them for something. But when you say, oh, how can I help you? Majority of the time, they're like, oh, no, you know, thank you for that. No, it's my pleasure. It's too broad. It's too much. Isolation says, what are the top two or three things you're working on right now that I can keep in mind? And this, if I run across somebody, I'd love to send them to you. What one or two things are you most passionate about? And if I ever run across somebody, I'd love to send them to you to help you get. I've done this with. Clinton, we've done it with Van Jones, with the head of NASA, the chiefest. Amazing people will tell you amazing things because what they're most passionate about sometimes has nothing to do with business. A friend of mine was chief of staff of NASA, four administrations. Helped us get in every level of government. Anything I need, I would call him and Courtney go, oh, okay, here, call this guy. I'm calling from Courtney, saw a chief of staff of NASA, did I catch you at a good time? Okay, why, are you? yeah. When I asked Courtney this, I said, Courtney, I love your time. What are you most passionate about? Is there anything you're working on outside of here that if I could help you, I'd love to. I'm not sure I can. Just asking separates you. Mm -hmm. Asking specifically isolates you. Because now you know exactly what it is. Isolating you to that answer opens the door for you to provide value to that person. thing he was working on, it, it's, it's close to coming out now. He was Jewish, and there, I tell this story all the time. In the Jewish concentration camps, apparently, and I'm, I'm not Jewish, so if I mess this up, sorry, but there was a scroll called a Torah. There was this tiny Torah in the concentration camps that they used to study. And when they were in there, they knew they'd get killed if, if they got caught with it, and they snuck it out afterwards. There was this famous religious artifact, and it was given to the first Israeli astronaut ever who took it up into space to get as close to God as possible. And that astronaut was on the Challenger, and the Challenger blew up. And the Torah was lost forever. Courtney's passion <coughs> is doing a documentary. Nothing to do with government. Nothing to do with space. And I'm like, well, Courtney, I live in L.A. I know five people that do that. Can I send them to you? Absolutely. Adding value. What's in it for him? By isolating and being specific. When you get to meetings at a specific level, this gives you an open door to go back and help people who ultimately can, will, and want to help you. Ask great questions. Build good advisory boards as you guys are doing this. The sales and marketing aspect, some of the companies we get into, Jimmy was asking about Wet Rock, which is this cool little device we're doing. Our advisory board, Mark Mathal, who runs Coca-Cola, used to, now he runs Unilever. Dr. Richard Layton, head of the National Groundwater Society, Dan Jones, who ran Clinton's Global Initiative. Our advisors, are people who can open the doors to get us into the areas we want to get into. At your level, understand your advisors may change as your business does. And advisors aren't all about equity. Advisors are about wanting to help you and you being able to help them. Some of our companies, like Cineplex, our mobile company, went from a switch to a software to an architecture to a web application to something totally over five years, it's a completely different business. 
our advisors have changed over time, but figure out who your advisors are. Every one of them can add value to you, and you can ask for the best people in the world when you learn how to be specific. Just isolate down, learn how to ask. Sampling of our advisors, I'm not gonna go through them because it doesn't matter. I mean, we literally can, can get to anybody, and we create these boards around our companies. Four quadrants of time, if you guys haven't seen this, I'm gonna fly through and I'm done. This is, this is, anybody know who this is? Four quadrants of time? That's, yeah. Brian Tracy? It's, it's Covey, but. Oh yeah, it's Covey. It's Covey, but. Covey. It's four it's, uh, These are the four quadrants of time. Quadrant three is your killer. Yeah. Things that are urgent but not important. Interruptions, phone calls, emails, every time your little computer bings and you guys step out of what you're doing and answer an email, stop it. Focus, set stuff aside, read, read Tim Ferriss's four hour work week. Not to try and work in four hours, but to figure out how to delegate aspects in your mind. But my quadrant, time and interest, the quadrant three killer for you from a sales and marketing standpoint is this. A customer who has all the interest in the world, but has no time. <coughs> you guys are going to kill your business on the 15 companies. Oh, well, we have interests. Well, we, these companies are interested. Interest doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> Interest doesn't get you funded. Figure out somebody that has lots of interest but no time will get you in trouble. Just always remember, a fast no is better than a slow maybe. Somebody telling you no is not a bad thing because mentally you mark them off the list, follow up later, a fast no is better than a slow maybe. How do you gauge someone quickly? Everybody turn over your, your test real quick. All right, who wants to read me their numbers across the four columns? All right, Tracy, what's your numbers? Uh, first one's 12, okay. 9, 14, 14, and 15. 15, who else? One more person? Okay, go ahead. 20, 8, 10, 12. 20, 8, 10, 12. What's your name? Kim. Kim. Okay, under the first column, everybody put R for red. Next column is Y for yellow. Third column is B for blue. Fourth column is G for green. Here's why this is important. Sales and marketing, in my opinion, is about your skill set, working with others, figuring out the differences between building a team, leading a team, customers, everybody's personality is different. Reds, the first column. Kim's a 20, Tracy's a 12. Here's the difference. Reds, entrepreneurial, aggressive, they're forward thinking, they're chargers. If you tell a red we're gonna go climb a mountain, the red's like, let's go. You walk into red's office, there's pictures of them with famous people, they're very proud of all the people that they have their arm around, even if they're people that aren't real. <laughs> Doesn't matter. They just like pictures of, of people, famous people. Yellows, engineers, detail-oriented. These are the people that have their offices, their filing cabinets are color-coded, all their hangers like to be the same in their closets. When you walk in the office of a yellow, they may have things up like diplomas, certificates of achievement, things that are very important to them. Yellows are good. Yellows are tactical. Yellows believe in rules, order, structure. If you know somebody's a yellow when you're selling to them, your word better be good. You better be on time. You better be finished. Yellows are very diligent. Next one, blues. Blues are harmonious, right? So Tracy's a 14 on blue, Kim's a 10. Tracy cares a little more about what people think about her and likes to be harmonious than Kim does. Not a good thing or a bad thing, it's just some people like warm and fuzzy. Blues, when you walk in their office, pictures of their family, their dogs, just stupid, sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say stupid things, but to me, I, when I see warm and fuzzy blues, I'm like, oh, another blue, okay. Blues are all about harmony. Blues are about making things work. Greens are the engineers, right? So a yellow, you tell a yellow you're gonna go climb a mountain, a yellow wants to know, how long you're going to be gone? How much food they need? How much water? How many people are going? You know, does everybody know? Has everybody got ice on their phone? Who, who are they going to? Yellows are planners. Blues? Tell blue, we're going to go climb a mountain. All the blue says is, who's going? Right? Let's go to Vegas. Hey, who's going? Let's go to a party. Cool. Who's going to be there? They don't care about details. It's just all about people. Green, <coughs> climb a mountain. Which mountain? Because they want to know the height. They want to study the geology. They want to know about the planet. They, they're, they're the engineers. Everybody is different. When you appreciate and know that this is 
really important from a sales standpoint because your sales cycle may be and your sales mentality may be red. I'm going to charge and get it done. A green, a green's going to question everything. We have a green engineer. He's down here in San Diego. You guys may know him. I'll talk about him real quick. Boo Peppers, who may have ever dealt with Boo? Rand Erickson, Motorola. Boo's brilliant. We sent him our advisor documents. <laughs> I had three commas missing, a paragraph off, and he checked to see if we had incorporated in the state we did. Oh and found out my incorporation was done three months after I told him it was, and almost didn't become our advisor because of that. <clears throat> He's a green. I don't deal with him anymore. I sit Greg <laughs> over my CEO because Greg can deal with greens. I can't. I just can't. I'm, I'm too loose around the edges. I'm too... I'm, I'm so far up here. The numbers and diligence stuff Jimmy's done is brilliant to me. I would never, I can't get that tactical, but I can find somebody that does. So understand this is about building your company to figure out who's doing what. These things you guys can do later. If you do this, you count the Fs. I'll just tell you the trick. Finish files are the result of years of scientific. When you count, most people count finished files are the result of years of scientific combined with many years of, what happens is the ofs, ofs, we say in our mind is of, ov, and we skip it. Mm -hmm. Psychologically, we skip it, so the number of fs is really, I think, six, and most people count three. So just realize, even when you know you're right, you're usually wrong. And then this one is, if you look here, here's an old woman, a big nose, her, her chin is down in the, the shawl. But if you also look, it's a young woman looking away, and that's a necklace. Some people can only see one or the other. Some people can see both. You know, again, whiffoo whiff them. You may want them to see the old lady. If they see the young lady, what's in it for them? Figure out the value for both parties. This you guys can read later. These are all the characteristics of those four temperaments. So you can go through that and figure out what you like, what your aggravators are, what your stressors are, your office environment, all of that there you guys can read later. My truce, greatest strength is your greatest weakness. People do more to avoid pain than gain pleasure. When you're selling into companies, it's all about pain. Whether it's them not making enough money, somebody else is beating them, more competition. You know, it's pain versus pleasure. People make decisions emotionally and defend them logically. You have to get people emotionally involved and then they'll defend you off. This is why you can't argue with people in bad relationships. Somebody in a relationship, whether it's a personal relationship or a business relationship, if they are emotionally attached, they will defend that all day long logically even though it makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> Just appreciate that and learn how to overcome it. Ask not why, ask why not. If you say it, they doubt it if they say it, it's true. From a sales standpoint, you saying your product is great is worth one point. That person saying your product's great is worth a hundred. How can you get somebody else to say what you're doing is good, what you're doing is great, what you're doing adds value? Figure out a way to do that. Three R's when you meet people. People love recognition. If people make introductions or help you, give them recognition, referrals, or revenue. Help somebody with contacts. Questions are the key to the universe. Begin with the end in mind. He who speaks first loses. Do you know, anybody know what that one means? You must be in sales. We're going to talk. No, no. You, I, I bet you it was either Primerica or A.O. Williams or one of those guys that you, you cut those six years with. Which one? I, it was Primerica with yeah. Pete and Sandy and all well, those guys. have a lot of the same background. Okay. And he sold knives. There so. you go. <laughs> he who speaks first loses says when you ask a question that's a closing question, right? When you put your valuation out, I just did this the other day. I was in a meeting for Wet Rock and I had three investors and they're like, all right, Stephen, how much are you looking for? I said, great news, guys. We're only looking for X. What's your valuation? I said, even better news. It's only Y. And I'll tell you what, guys, what it is. Small amount. I said, we're doing half a million dollars. They're like, great. What's your valuation? I said, it's 1.5 million, pre. And I shut up. There's silence and they're looking at each other. Most of you would get nervous, go, well, you know, but we justified it and we're, no. <laughs> Don't say a word. You sit there. If it takes five minutes, it doesn't matter. You sit there. And you let them think about it. And you let them look at each other and you let them shuffle in their chair and somebody will speak <laughs> and ask a question and then you answer that question. He who speaks first loses. This one's hard to do. Mm -hmm. All right? And then, I don't have this one on here. I'm going to add a new one called the flinch factor. 
Because then when they go, well, you know, I think that value is too high, you go, oh, you know, I don't think so. I think we're right on. Anytime somebody makes an offer to you, no matter what that offer is, flinch. Flinch. Every time somebody's buying a car, they make an offer, flinch. It just it makes them feel better. There's a whole negotiation of the flinch factor. 99% of the things you worry about never happen, so why worry? My networking tips, and I promise I'm done after this. Use the tornado technique during an event. Stand by the speakers. Did I tell you guys this one before? Yeah. Stand by the speaker, listen to everybody else. Do your homework in advance, see who's going to be at the events. Look for the most popular person at the event and meet that person. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's there and knows a bunch of people. Go meet that person, figure out what they do, do the tornado technique so they can help you. Or ask. Or send an email in advance, say, I'm going to be at this event, who do you know that's going to be there? I do this a lot when I'm going to big conferences, and I'll put a link out to the speakers. I'll say, hey, I'm going, here are the speakers, if any of, anybody knows them, I'd love to meet them. And I use my friend network to get introduced to the speakers before I go there in advance. So isolation is a good thing.